I would like to start by talking with you both about this approach that you've taken uh, in shooting uh, your last three films that you've made together, the Dallas Buyers Club, Wild, and, and now Demolition. How has, I mean, could you talk a little bit about the style that you've been using, the approach, and how it's evolved over these films, or how it stayed the same, or? It started uh, on Dallas Buyers Club, well, earlier on Café de Floor. Mm. I was shooting with Down Syndrome kids, and uh, they were affected by the spots and the flags and reflectors, and uh, so I asked uh, the DP to get rid of everything. I asked the crew to get out of the set, and I started to shoot uh, available light with a red camera with uh, Vanessa Paradis, with the actress and the Down Syndrome kids, and, uh, and then uh, I realized it was possible to uh, get rid of the crew. <laughs> and went, oh my God, we can do that. And then I looked at the dailies and it was beautiful. It looked like uh, I was in a cinema in Paris watching at the dailies. And it looked like I, I had a cinema experience. And it was a red, no film grain, you know, film look has been applied yet. So, so since Dallas Barrios Club, we didn't have... Uh, we didn't have a lot of money. We made the film with four point and nine million, and mm. so I told uh, the producers and Matthew, uh, "Let's shoot uh, with Eve um, uh, with this approach, available light. We can. Uh, we'll ask the crew to get out. We'll shoot three hundred and sixty degrees, and uh, no reflector. No, uh, it doesn't block the light. It doesn't reflect it, uh, and uh, and uh, and it became." Uh, it became a, it became a style a style that we're not pushing ahead. We're not aiming for style. We aim for storytelling, emotion. We observe. We don't uh, interfere. Try to not interfere. You know, we don't dolly in. Mm. If we dolly in, it's to follow a character and uh, try to design the shots with the main characters. And uh, and I, I must say, he has the courage to do that. And uh, he controls the Alexa so well. And uh, and I, 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 you know, I, I push him out of his comfort zone, uh, asking him always to try to shoot at two or under two, so there's no depth of field. And you want to take over? So, so yeah. you're you're following the, the the actors aren't blocked ahead of time. You're more just following the action as it's as as it's as we are now. There's no rehearsal at all. On Dallas, we would like look with the viewfinder a little bit and know what gonna happen but now we're like we <laughs> don't know what the actor is gonna do and everything it's it's tougher for the focus puller than me I, w I would say <laughs> but yeah but what is this it's it's great because this first idea was because of an economic economic reason you know we didn't have time and and, and money for lights and for Dallas but it become kind of an aesthetics uh, it's very I, I still learn it's because you don't think about it, but as a cinematographer, you always kind of control. Mm. And when you shoot a little bit light, there's a lot of effects that happen in the face of the actors. That you usually, if you put already a key light, mm. it erases it. Mm -hmm. And there's so many secondary lights that happens in real life, or you know, the fact that the lights coming from window are a lot of times bounce on green, mm. so the light is greener. If you are in a in the beach, it's it's warmer and things like that, and it's fun to play with that. And but I can only do that with Jean-Marc and with the Alexa camera. Mm. I don't trust the other camera for this kind of shoot, and uh, I don't trust other <laughs> director than Jean-Marc <laughs> to do that to shoot a little light. Brian, could you tell us a little bit about where this story and these characters came from? Sure. Uh, I did demolition work um, when I was probably 17 till I was 21 years old, and um, I was. Uh, working for my father, mostly these houses that had burned. So I was on the crew that had to go in and, and tear the house down mm -hmm. um, before they started rebuilding it. So um, uh, there were a couple of things that happened. I learned that, you know, once you tear everything apart, you tear the walls down, you tear the ceiling down, um, you see the framework of the house. And I remember thinking, oh, okay, I get it. Like, this is how it's all put together. I couldn't build it, but um, I, I think I just sort of processed that, that metaphor, even as a, a younger man who, who didn't have any ambition of becoming a writer or anything. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was I, I sort of lost myself, you know. Um, I was standing around in these, these burned out houses, breathing in the insulation and the char and, and thinking this, this is not the life that I want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I got to find a way out of this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did, and I and then I, I came to Los Angeles, <laughs> and um, it was it, it was also manual labor, <laughs> you know, yeah. starting 
to trying to become a screenwriter and and uh, and then I found myself in a very similar place you know five six years later where it just wasn't working mm -hmm. you know and um I was just I was failing and I'm working in a bar and, and and I don't have any money and and I don't know what my voice is anymore I don't know what the town wants I don't know how to pay my rent anymore and I slipped into that that similar place as when I was doing demolition work you know mm -hmm. and that the, the, that apathy that I was feeling and and um, from that was the voice of this character and uh, he basically started speaking to me you know and his voice got a little bit louder and and then there was this world created and these other characters and these relationships. And um, it, w it was just something that I it was cathartic diving into it and giving him the sledgehammer and let him, letting him destroy things. Mm -hmm. Well, Judah, it's always great to see and, and introducing credit uh, at the end of a movie. Um, and it must be great to see your name below that, uh, that credit. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got the role and, and started to actually work on the, on the film? Yeah, um, I initially self-taped for it, uh, mm. actually, uh, and and I, you know, uh, sent auditions back and forth a few times and got some notes, and then I ended up uh, skyping with Jean Marc, and and we skyped for I think like two hours, um, and you know we really worked through the material and and talked about the character and the film, and. Uh, uh, the one thing was music was mm -hmm. you know is very instrumental in the film and, and it's kind of his his way of expressing himself mm -hmm. and so Jean Marc made made a, a playlist of six or seven songs and he and he had me dance to them mm. and I mean it, it ranged from like R and B to rock to you know hip hop the most contradictory genres and and you know I, and I'm not a dancer <laughs> but 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 you know it wasn't about the technicality it mm -hmm. was really about the feeling and the feeling of absolutely letting go and really just putting yourself out there. You bring up the, the music that is such an important part of this film. So I wanted to ask Russ about how, uh, how you, how you, whether the songs came first or whether the scenes came first. I mean, that's always such an interesting, you know, question that I have as a moviegoer is when you're watching a scene and there's a song in it and it fits so perfectly you ask yourself, well, was the scene conceived with that song in mind, or did somehow lightning strike and a miracle occur and the right song landed in, you know, and fit perfectly together like a puzzle piece with that scene? The issue that we had production-wise was there was a song written in the screenplay <laughs> that was a big factor, and crazy on you. I mean, <laughs> it is a factor. So we had to have it. And as, as anybody knows that tries to get rights to this kind of stuff, a, a, a song like that that is so well known and, and, and has been for so long, it's still probably being played every summer, some arena, mm -hmm. um, those are expensive. And so in a, in a moderately budgeted movie like this, well, that takes a big chunk of your flexibility right mm -hmm. off the top. And so... Jean-Marc was really under, uh, uh, I, I think, a, a tremendous burden because he loves wall-to-wall, -wall, no score, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And so there were a lot of songs to pick besides that one. So. Yeah, was that a deal-breaker that that heart song had to be? Yeah, well, the one for I, both of you. It's it's it, he wrote it. I mean, it was it was in the my 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 first reaction. It's funny because I, I I challenged Brian about it because I didn't like this song. Like, Come on, man, crazy on you. <laughs> but it's not about liking the song. Let's Nobody pick, let's pick another song, song so that will really right? get. It's gonna catch you. It's not a sad. <laughs> I know, and it's funny how I got to learn to yeah. to to love this song, and now I. Now you'll know, never I get it out of your head. And ever. how and how I had fun in the cutting room and even on set with Jake and. Uh, uh, with this song, and uh, and then it's always you know trying to find the right tracks uh, f uh, uh, for the characters, making playlists for them. So Davis wasn't into music, but we we uh, as Brian said, uh, uh, Chris uh, Judah's character was the music, uh, the music element. The music uh, was was the one that was that will that will. Uh, Give us uh, motivation to mm -hmm. uh, to bring music into into this film, and 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 there's no score, and you mm -hmm. know I like to do that to uh, just use music that is in the story. The characters are playing music. Sometimes I cheat, and it becomes score, and and 
and all right, the characters are not li hearing the music anymore, but it's rare, you know, most of the time we cut in because there's a song playing in the living room or in the kitchen, and he's always listening to music, his character, mm -hmm. and uh, the mother also, Karen, is listening to, mu to music. Uh, Davis' wife, Julia, was had a thing for Sufjan Stevens and classical music, and uh, so it's trying to... Uh, find music that will uh, help us uh, tell the story and uh, make it look real and have some emotion. Music <coughs> is so powerful, uh, it conveys emotions. It, it's, uh, not, and, and not even with the lyrics, just with, with the melody and, and... Yeah, and the way that the characters are, you catch them humming yeah. melodies or whispering lyrics, it's really, it's really quite effective. Well, and, and how do you pick a song to destroy a house to? Um, were there a lot of contenders for, for that? Yeah. And, and then to Judah, how do you destroy a house uh, most effectively? The song worked, so how did the, uh, the actual uh, demolition work go? Yeah, that, that was my first day on set. That was your first that day? That was my first day. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I walked onto set and was handed a sledgehammer. That was my, <laughs> no, uh, what I love about that scene, though, is, is everything's real. I mean, there's no breakaway glass. There's, it's so safe, of course, but you know everything that you see happen, me and Jake actually did, mm -hmm. um, which which was crazy. And it's the kind of thing you never think you're going to be standing on one side of a room and somebody's going to tell you to just throw a crowbar into a TV, but it <laughs> happened. Um, and and you know uh, the song actually, it's a song by M Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, that was we actually played that through the house as oh, we wow. were yeah. demolishing it. So that definitely played a huge role. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight, and thank you for the thank, you. thank you. Thanks. Thank you for coming. <laughs>